guys and gals, welcome to the Oxford Holy Club, a place where we ready ourselves to give an answer for the hope that's in us. We will also try to answer your questions, random questions from the interwebs, and have some fun too. So put some seatbelts on your ears because we're in for a wild ride. Well, hello, Oxford Holy Club. I am one quarter of your host, Brad Siliker. I'm Lucas Candy, uh, two fourths of your hosts. Oh, nice. Hello. Action. I'm Matthew. <laughs> that was and awesome. I am Andrew, live from the garage. Hey, I like the new the change of scenery. What uh, what's constituted the change, Andrew? Uh, well, I'm working from home, and this is pretty much the only place that I could get some work done. So oh, it's going well. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Matt, you brought a fun energy. Hello. <laughs> that was interesting. I think that's gonna be my. I was listening to CBC Radio today, and they had a guy who was a micro uh, germ biologist on there. And when uh, the host said, uh, uh, we've got a gentleman here who's wrote a book called uh, Micro Germs. We'd like to introduce him now. It's Dr. Blah, 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 blah. I was expecting somebody super serious, but he goes, hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> and oh, the wow. minute I heard it, I was like, "That's I'm doing that every time now. That's <laughs> he, he brought life to this <laughs> disease. Interesting. Yeah, I think, but anyway, it's going to be my, I was listening to CBC radio today and I had a guy who was a now something something funky went on with Facebook because that's the way it has to be. Yep. Oh, let's see, Mandy, is the live stream still happening for you? Yeah, it's happening for me. It's, it's happening for, for you. Yeah. Uh, someone give us a wave here and see if that shows up. While I try to get back <laughs> to our live video, we this is fun. On our uh, stream. This is fun. Um, okay, so while we're while I'm trying to figure that out, why don't I say things like, "Hey, everybody, welcome to the Oxford Holy Club podcast." Do you know it'd be a huge help if right now those of you that are watching and I can't see who I'm flying blind right now, if you could uh, share this podcast, it would make a huge difference in in getting our reach out. If you don't like it, if you don't comment, that would suck too. But could you please click the share button and um, and don't be embarrassed. It's it's okay. It would make a world of difference for us in getting this video out there and helping right the podcast. Now, those of you that are watching, and I can't see. Oh yeah, my goodness! Well, yeah, we keep getting some audio feedback. Here, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Brad, you really undersold the podcast there. Why don't you? Uh, why don't you sell it properly? On the go. Well, listen, guys, we're glad everybody's here. We're already up to twenty people watching. Let's get things rolling right away, guys. Uh, welcome to another week of being uh, socially distant. Uh, Andrew, how was your week, man? Catch us up. Sorry, man. <laughs> Got like the the audio coming in. My week. Uh, where are we? It's been good. Are we doing the catch up? Catch yep. up. Yeah, just to keep catch conversation up. going while I sort this stuff out. All right. Well, guess what? Uh, van you're... update. Man. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Van you update. And I didn't. I didn't tell any of you guys this, but you last didn't. week, last week I bought the van. Nice. Oh, whoa. congratulations, yeah. my my dude! Congratulations. Yeah. D detail, details, details. Well, it's still running a week later. That's all I got for you. <laughs> uh, sorry, just a second. Hot off the presses, uh, Scott Layton has unsubscribed from our podcast because you didn't buy a van from him. But I think actually, you know okay. what? Oh, After no. I talked about the van <laughs> on the podcast, Scott reached yeah. out to me didn't and really. offered me offered me more assistance and guidance. And I even said, "Hey, if you have a van," and he's like, "Listen, I'm not I'm not talking to you because <laughs> I'm trying to sell you a van. Right. I just want to help you." So shout wow. out to Scott, Mister Help. What a guy! Eh? Well done. He saved our podcast last week, That's um, right. trying to trying to help Andrew along, regardless of getting the commission. Mm -hmm. Can you at least tell us what color your van is, Andrew? It's like a grayish, darker, darkest grayish. It's a good color. I like it. It's a good I like color. It. Yeah. I like it. Yep. Fantastic. Well, congrats. So, like, that. were you nervous doing like any kind of like big public business transaction where you're like wiping the whole thing down, or how'd that go? Well, I didn't wipe it all down or anything, but I'm pretty sure I was the only one test driving it. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, it was fine because I had already done all the test driving and checking it out like before all this went down. Uh, yeah. So I really just gave them a check and right. moved on kind of thing. So You're telling me you I was cash for that thing? Briefcase? Oh, yeah. So I don't, I don't wow. Know. 
I can't finance anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's it's we're on the same page. Okay, yeah, yeah that's yeah, very good. There okay, go. congratulations on the van. Um, how many kids do you plan on having now to pack into that van? Well, the old Honda Odyssey does sit, seat eight. Eight, oh my goodness, right. bonus seat. Take yeah, that, we're Dodge not, Caravan. We're not going up that high. <laughs> You're not going to go full Duggar on us? We, we're uh, in the point Duggar. where we're not against having more kids, but we are not for having more kids. That sounds like somebody's about to have another kid right there. Yeah, yeah those are famous <laughs> last words. Boat. I think Lucas was in that boat at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, two is perfect. And yeah. then three. <laughs> uh, Gentlemen, oh, just, cool. just a quick heads up. I will need someone to moderate chat for us tonight because it looks like I just can't get back into a screen that shows me anything. Sounds good. What else happened this week? Anything exciting, Andrew? Well, that's it, man. That was exciting. That is, Band's pretty exciting. big. That is, I just didn't work in one. I just don't want to take away if you had yeah. like a secondary. Uh, Working thing. in the garage, and I love it. It's, I get it so toasty in here. Yeah, it's like a sauna in here, and I'm just like in my <laughs> glory. Uh, and like I'm super productive in here. I thought I'd be way distracted, but. It's a good spot. I might just work from here forever. Yeah. Once the self, uh, <laughs> once this whole social distancing thing is uh, is over with, I mean that wouldn't be a, a bad second revenue stream. Just turn your garage into a sauna. Huh? Yeah. There many I, was, saunas? I was thinking like a, a, an office that you rent out space in. One of those. Are like, there any saunas in your neck of the woods? Not on my street, as far as I know. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Um, uh, good. Lucas, what's are you, going are you on? gonna? Are, just one last question for Andrew. Are you gonna, when the weather gets a little warmer, you're gonna pop that garage door open and just like work facing outwards towards the street? Because I know I would want to. Uh, I would be. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I would not get anything done. I'd be like, whoa, a stick. You could, you a could stick be with, the road. You could be what those people do, where they build the full size screens that cover their garage. Oh yeah, doors. that's right. Just yeah. like mosquitoes. <laughs> my neighbor you. in Moncton used to do that. Hmm. Hey, yeah. yeah, Scott's right. Scott's um, picking on me right now. Yeah, Scott. Brock, uh, Brock, uh, Brock Simons. Good to have you here, Brock. By the way, buddy, uh, Brock. I, I feel like he's coming from a place of experience where he's saying, uh, <laughs> "After three kids, it just doesn't matter." <laughs> and I'm gonna say it how I feel like Brock would be saying it. It'd be. Uh, after three kids, it, uh, it just doesn't matter anymore how many kids you have. Kids are going nuts anyway. Man, yeah, what kind of cars do you got I there in the in your garage, Brad? Uh, oh, yeah. not, we did this last week, Andrew. He doesn't know. He's, he's just going to point at both cars and say, those here's Lambos. Lambos. Here's the Lambo. Yeah. Stop telling me what I'm saying. And here's... <laughs> I'm almost positive and there's that's the, not a Lambo. And there's the no, Saturn. No, listen, yeah. we did this last week. Hey, Randy, good to see you, buddy. <laughs> All right, we're moving on from van talk because people are going to have this misconception that we know that we're actually manly men. And that's then right. We'll, yeah. All the questions will be that's a di- That's through. a slippery slope to try to maintain. Yeah. I guarantee uh, you, every, every question next week is going to be about a Trans Am or a Hemi or something that we don't know nothing about. So, <laughs> you just Lucas, expended what, your vocabulary on cars, didn't all you? All right. Let's go All right, Lucas. so um, Lucas? As, when I have lots of time on my hands and I'm at home, and I mean, I have been doing the whole kid school thing or whatever, um, I, instead of watching like Netflix, I, I, I really lean towards like falling down YouTube rabbit holes. Okay. Um, and one that I fell down a long time ago, but I've been like keeping up with because he's got a ton of stuff, is this guy, this British guy, and he does a, a thing called Mark Felton Productions. And he does these short little five to 10 minute little mini documentaries on like history. So it was like the history channel before it became all like not about history anymore where they sold out man. Uh, But it's super good because I'm a history nerd. Like I was my undergrad. I liked it even when I was like a middle schooler, a super cool middle schooler uh, who loved history, Mm. uh, world war two, especially. And this guy every week is bringing up world war two stuff. I had never heard of before. And it's interesting. Like, Fun fact, did you know that uh, the Germans invaded Canada at one point? They actually set up a weather station in one of our weird frozen islands. Uh, and it wasn't discovered till like the 70s or something like that. They found it. Uh, just stuff like that. Like, it's just super interesting little tidbits of history. So it's fun. So if you like history, Mark Belton Productions, great, great job there. And other than that, it's just, it's been kind of neat to watch um, uh, my son Gideon, he started uh, playing Minecraft with like his cousin because you know we were doing Zoom videos and stuff. I said, "Well, you guys both have Minecraft, so you guys could do that like together." So he's been kind of having Minecraft uh, parties with uh, his cousins there. So that's been kind of neat to see that happen and see the, the the gamer emerge. Although he's always really wanted to be, but we're trying to not go too crazy with the video games at this age. But uh, why? There'll be time for that later. Why? On. There. <laughs> 
Good grief. Okay. <laughs> well, so that's that's, that's, that's my week. See, you're, the rabbit hole for you seems educational. The ones I always end up on, well, I guess educational. I always end up with animals <laughs> eating animals and flat earth people. I don't know oh, how oh. I always end up there. Sorry, I, there's one last thing I need to share that was super good. I can't believe I didn't share it. Okay, I also found a, a Instagram feed called Nature is Metal. And it's all about these like crazy pictures and videos from nature of like stuff that like the history channel or the nature channel probably wouldn't show. Like it's a little extreme sometimes of like animals eating other animals. Since they just, sold like, out. Crazy because they sold out. But there's just one and it's this guy. And it <laughs> looks like it's in like India or somewhere. And it's like a scooter. And he's he's like tapping the like top part, like where your handlebars connect to. And he pops open the little grommet and there's like a little like nose sticking out, like a like, little like a snake tongue. And he kind of pops it open, and all of a sudden, a cobra comes out. It was inside the handlebars of his of his uh, scooter this whole time. It was awesome. Nature is very metal. So if you like that, and you're not too squeamish. Nature is metal. Uh, I highly recommend. Me and Gideon, uh, I, I pre-screened a couple of them that were a little too graphic, uh, but he was super into it. He loved it. Uh, anyway, something to do wow. if you're looking to kill time in the quarantine. Okay, so I'm normally where I'm leading this segment, I would go to Brad and save myself to the end, but I have to interject at this point to do <laughs> okay. my share because I can't even believe the words coming out of your mouth right now, Lucas. So <laughs> nature is metal. Um, so um, backstory: me and my buddy Kent, uh, along with uh, three other guys, uh, back in January, we were doing a hike uh, through a part of Fundy. I don't know if I told you this. We're hiking along <laughs> and we come across this post right uh that was in the ground it was a mile marker and on it there was a qr code have i told you the story no no, no? okay there was a qr code <laughs> stapled to it and uh anyway uh kent pulled out his phone scanned it and up popped this audio file uh and it was this uh, girl who was speaking in like this like kind of like quiet very poetic type voice um and uh and she was like talking about like the trees and talking about nature and talking about all this. So hey, me and Kent thought that's sweet. We're like, that's, that's super cool kind of thing. The other guys thought it was super stupid, uh, but me and Kent were like, we're <laughs> making like our sonnets own. or like educating you. about. It was a about little bit or? like, it would, it would be like a little bit educational, but almost like more poetic and like, thank you earth for this thing, you know, that kind of, that kind of spiritualism okay. type stuff. Thank so, you, I mean, we were, we were digging like that as much as it was just a cool idea, something neat. So yeah. we looked for QR codes on the whole rest of the trail, but we Lucas, or sorry, Kent and I decided right then and there we're making our own. And so um, we produced our first two this week um, no that uh, we're going to be. Yeah. So we've, we've got our QR codes uh, all ready to go. Uh, yeah. And the reason <laughs> I was blown away. Hold on. Bring those said, back up again, Matt. I purposely got part of them blocked out because we don't want people. We don't want people looking at them like this. We want you to actually find them in the trail, so that we can see how many people on the trails are actually listening. So the reason I was, for it. I was blown away, Luke, is is nature is metal is because we called we called our whole thing. It's hashtag. I don't know if you can see it there. Come on, come on, uh, come on, come on, come on. It's uh. Come on, come on, come on. Anyway, you can't see it. It's, nature is fantastic, is what we've called it, right? Because we wanted to be still kind of that little voice kind of thing, but mm -hmm. to be funny. So I'm going to play you a real short clip here uh, of, uh, of the kind of thing. Because ours is not meant to be educational. It's meant to be kind of funny. But is still this hosted little, on mattbarber.com? But a little bit cringy, too. So here's, here's just a short clip. <laughs> this one here is called uh, The Wild is Calling. That's what we've called it. Okay. <laughs> Bring it closer to your mic. Majestic American crow. <laughs> Stunning. You may recognize this one. It is the cunning red fox. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Interesting. And finally, the king of our jungles, the female black bear. <gasps> That was actually the mating call of the black bear. At this point, we recommend you keep moving as you have invoked a significant amount of curiosity from any nearby black bears. <laughs> so that's oh, the idea, my right? word, Matt. So it's, so it's Kent that's making the, 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 the animal noises. He's phenomenal. Yeah. I don't know. It's one of these talents. So anyway, as we go around on all the different trails that we hike and stuff, we're going to be 
putting up our QR codes and tracking that. it on. Uh, so anyway, I don't want to give any more information because we don't want people just going and listening uh, to them. We're producing our third one tomorrow. Uh, we want people to actually find them on the trail and go that way. So nature is metal. Nature is fantastic. I wonder, I, cool. I wonder if there's a way like that, that we could start leaving um, little clues or things inside our videos like if people catch something that's on the back and they scan it, it brings them. I, I don't know. Some kind cool. of, I don't want little, people super in depth analyzing my, the inside of my yeah. house, but I little mean, Easter yeah, egg. I like the idea. Yeah, a little, little Easter, Easter egg. egg, a little Easter egg. That would be fun. So uh, yeah, that's the news. Other than, other than that, we're doing good here in social distancing. Brad, what's well, going on? All right. So similar to, uh, to you guys, we were uh, getting outside a bunch and I'm going to show you a video in just a minute of getting outside but and you guys don't get to see it ahead of time and you'll not probably listen to it on facebook so this one's really for the listeners <laughs> um but we went we went uh, to brackley beach and my mother then messaged me later saying hey aren't the beaches closed um so anyway we went to brackley beach and we were up on the sand dunes playing with the kids and just having a good time um and we got out into the water and um <laughs> And Jaden got his feet wet, and then we went up to a wharf to go play, and um, and I'm I'm gonna just show you a quick vid, and then I'll I'll pick up. There's people. Okay, kind of sounds bad if you can't actually watch the video. So my daughter made this video that was uh, of Jaden and I trying to get into the water and, uh, and it's, it's March, it's super cold and we were both trying to run in we both run in like with, with, uh, you know, we're going to go for it until we get like to the water's edge and then it's like tippy toeing in and, and I wound up sinking up to my thighs and that was not so much fun. It was really cold, but we had a blast. The kids had so much fun just running to the water's edge um, at a, at the actual beach and um, and then running back. So that's kind of what we did. Lucas, I would love to toss to you. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. All right, I'm gonna bring up the graphic and here we go in three, two, one. All right, so when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for potent ponderables, I was thinking it's not like a fancy question, but I think it's it could be a lot of fun. And the question is, what is the worst purchase you have ever made? And before we started talking about this, there was a little bit as in like, was it just a dumb financial decision that I really liked or just like you bought something and you're like, why did I buy this, whether or not it was expensive or not? And I said, hey, let's do it wide open, whatever you think. Um, in the comments, while we're nattering away, uh, why don't you guys throw in some of the worst purchases you've ever made? Uh, but let's start off. Uh, we'll start off with Mr. Andrew. Go, Andrew. All right. So this was a slam dunk my, for you. Well, I kind of just broadened it into basically my entire university career. <laughs> I made. I just <laughs> can't like going even to say. university or just at while you were at university. No, no. While I was at university, the countless poor video game purchases that I made and they were poor video game purchases because I was poor and had no money to buy any of the things. And I'll just kind of list a few things. I, it, while I was in university, I bought three different Xbox 360s, <laughs> none of which that I can really honestly say I had the money to buy, <laughs> but they broke. So I needed to get it new one right so they were like one after the other not like three at once you didn't yeah want i just didn't every room i just didn't buy them all at the same time but still i didn't have money to buy any of them i bought a psp which i mean no regrets but we had pretty weeks, great. countless but isn't... hours of fun brad and lucas had psps and so obviously so does I matt did a psp matt did yeah, you matt had one you had a so psp calm. we played so calm I still have one. Still have it. It's sitting over there on the shelf. I can look at it from here. Um, Want to sell it? Just <laughs> okay. Just so many poor, poor, poor decisions in terms of 
buying video games that I cannot afford. <laughs> and I mean, there's some video games that are worth money, but most of them, they depreciate pretty fast. <laughs> kind of like cars, you know, they just you buy them and yeah. Mm. So that's my decisions. You know, I don't know if I regret them because I really wanted them, <laughs> but they were really dumb decisions. <laughs> Uh, Lucas, Don't what about you, you? Oh, me. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's go with you. I'll, 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 I'll finish off. Well, so I went with After something that. similar to Andrew, which was uh, the Nintendo, the new 3DS that came out. There was the, you know, the 3DS, and they put out a new, more powerful one that could play <laughs> Super Nintendo games, and and it was it was just fantastic and expensive. I could never afford to buy one, and uh, what wound up happening was we were buying a van, and uh, we were at in Moncton uh, at the Chrysler dealership looking at a van and in their showroom they had display cases full of all kinds of different electronics and things and then in the middle of the floor was like massive toolboxes and snow blowers and all these different things that if you bought a van you <laughs> you got one of the one thing for free from this from this you gigantic can take an item from the toy chest in the pile of yeah <laughs> in this pile of of things that look like they should be in Andrew's garage right now and and so um, while we were humming and hawing and going over and, and the guy was doing some stuff, like Mandy and I would walk around the room, just kind of look. And we had pretty much decided we wanted the van, but we weren't 100 percent. And then so the, then we're like, OK, well, we're going to get the van. So how are we going to sweeten the deal? Right. What's going to make this that much better? And I pitched the 3DS, which got shot down real quick. <laughs> Because it's like, look, there's a toolbox, like a big one. Well, I don't, I didn't need that. I had toolboxes, and there was all this different stuff. So, in the end, I prevailed, and it was the most expensive 3DS I've ever bought. <laughs> that came with a Dodge Town and Country. It came, or it town came and with a Dodge, uh, or it came with a Chrysler Town and Country. Get your facts straight, Lucas. Um, <laughs> and and we still, I still have both. I only use one of them. Can you guess which one gets used? <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm astounded that this was done as an adult. That you you <laughs> you, you made the decision as an adult. Wow, no, good decision, with, Brad. With I, two I children, adult with two children. With two children. Uh, Can you just uh, read Brock's comment there. I can't. So yeah, so, and I, I just froze up. Go go for it, Andrew. So he said he bought a Saint Hubert's delivery car at auction. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Brock. Tell me it had the. Tell me it had the the rooster top. The the, the what is it no, called? No, he said it didn't. He said ah, it didn't have rooster tail though. Got you know that car. You know that car has been abused. Aren't those like, like those like super small two door cars? Aren't they like those little? Yeah, I don't know. Nissan Versa. All I know is that anytime we're driving around Moncton and the girls see one. They just start screaming, chicken car, chicken car. <laughs> <laughs> That's where, where we're at. Yeah. I'm giving uh, a quick yeah. shout out to my mother because she's in yeah. chat and to Mike so McPhail. My, so here's my purchase. This was also in university, but it wasn't something irresponsible like a Nintendo system like the rest of you guys. <laughs> um, I was in university. Of course, we had no money. And it was the first time I ever bought anything on eBay. Uh, I don't know. Meals ready to eat? Like a, was it the meals ready uh, to eat? Your first. And it was it was the first time I ever bought anything on eBay, and I found a surround sound system oh, on right. eBay uh, for I think it was like forty nine bucks, but it was like five point one. It had like six speakers. It was you know the whole thing. So I was super pumped. Put it on my credit card, which was pretty near max. And uh, for, oh, was, I have a whole new I have a whole new thing. Anyway, that was like it was like fifty. It was like fifty or sixty bucks, right? Yeah. put it through getting shipped fantastic so i wait and i wait and i wait and i'm not getting this around sound system and uh anyway i go and i check my visa to make sure that it went through but on my visa it charged me like i can't remember the number it was like 160 or 170 bucks i was like what the heck kind of thing <laughs> thing finally arrives i put it all together it was shipped from great britain so it was actually pounds. Oh, it Great Britain dollars. pounds. It wasn't dollars. <laughs> and when it came, the plug-in didn't. It was fit the wrong plug -ins. plug -ins. <laughs> I Had to get travel adapter. And I had no idea about how to ship this thing back. Like it was just, it's just what it is. 
So anyway, I stripped the speakers off and I sold the speakers <laughs> for like 10 bucks a piece and cut my losses. And that was the end Was of this that like time. a moment of great shame? Because I don't remember hearing about this. <laughs> great uh, shame. It was in the apartment. You were there. Yeah. Oh, man, it was I bad news, man. But uh, it was it was like over 150 bucks and it came with the wrong plug in. That's and great. <laughs> that was, yeah. So that's by far the worst purchase I've ever made. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I have probably, I mean, I have a bunch, I'm sure. I'm pretty frugal. Like, and, and no matter what I buy, I can buy like water when I'm dying of thirst. And I would what? still have, and I would still have buyer's remorse for it. Like, anyway. Um, so uh, I, there, there, but my Achilles heel has always been, and I haven't been there in like a decade, is the Sussex uh, annual flea market. And oh, it is goodness, basically Lucas. a yard sale that takes over half of Sussex. And you're like, oh, yeah, big yard sale. I get it. You don't get it. Unless no, you call it what it is. No, you don't. What they, yeah, you call don't it what get it how is big and what it they is. call it. It's a flea market. Yeah, it's, it's a flea, flea market. market. Yeah, it's a flea market. Yeah, and don't try and spruce they, it up by calling it a yard sale. They have to, like, that's a spruce up for it. Like, you, it's like hours. And, and every time I go, I'm like, there's more rusty car parts than I thought. I mean, I remember there was a lot last time, but I think there was more than I remember of, like, people trading, like, I got the blinker from an 87 Packard or whatever, right? So, but there are like random stuff there and I always buy something stupid and kind of expensive and pointless. Like, oh, well, this one isn't pointless. Uh, I bought a bayonet one time uh, and- um, Hold on. Little bayonet pun. Uh, Yeah, I bought bought a bayonet uh, because why not? Like it was so cool and it was like 60 bucks, which in high school money was a lot of money. Uh, And in today's money, it's still not a small amount of money. And I, here's why, you know what? It had a oh, metal sheath and you pull it out and it makes this like shing sound. I was like, oh, gotta have it. Gotta uh, have so it. So I guess so I did. So there I'm walking around this bayonet and the guy's like telling me all about it. Like, oh yeah, these deep grooves are so when you stab someone, the blood can come out. I was like, oh good, that's very useful for me with all the stabbing <laughs> I do. And uh, anyway, so about a bayonet. Do you still have it? Definitely, yep. Go get it. it now. Do you want me? I'll get it after, during Brad's thing. I'll go grab it. Brad's um, already. I've Jeff, already talked. Jeff is bringing it up right now. Jeff is like, I made the mistake of going with Lucas one time. He took two hours to decide on a World War II knife. Well, thing. sixty bucks in Lucas money is a lot of money. So yeah, what <laughs> that is a lot time. of money. Um, I also I bought. I spent thirty bucks in this like little like armband thing that they would have had for this like uh, basically like a secret agent group Luke. from back in the day that probably was fake. The guy told me all the things I need to know to know that was real, but that's not a great, you know, sales pitch. Brad and has a finally, question. Yes, Brad. None question. of this is in the notes. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm freestyling it like jazz, man. Wow. Yeah, it's got to go wild. Uh, and then uh, also and a pre, and a, another year after, I don't remember if it was the year before or after, I bought, I spent another like 60 bucks on a pair of walkie-talkies. Uh, here we walkie-talkies, go. You're like, okay, well, you know, that might not be so bad. You know, I have a pair of like the nice ones. These were like 1990s walkie-talkies and like, th- they were like this big. They weighed about eight pounds. They took 12 AA <laughs> batteries each. Uh, and I remember oh, I was so excited. I was so excited. I'm like, oh man, at camp, I'm gonna win all the games because I'll have this great technology <laughs> to use. And but I was too cheap to buy good batteries. <laughs> I bought dollar store batteries. And it turns out they don't run on dollar store batteries. And I was so just annoyed with it. I, I threw them out not that long ago. Those, what you actually bought was a satellite phone that you needed to plug into your car. <laughs> Probably right. So, and I mean, I bought some stupid video game stuff too, but those are the, those, uh, Brad, I'm going to go up and get that bayonet while, uh, while you talk about. Uh, your sure. I, I'm going to, I'm going to remind right. people that are watching right now. We got, uh, from what I can tell, it looks like there's 28 people. We've had up at over 30. Yeah, um, which is pretty cool. But uh, guys, could you do us a favor? And I said at the onset of the episode and, and then everything went screwy for me. If you could, I see people are liking the um, the podcast, the video. That's fantastic. And we really appreciate it. If you could hit the share button, that would actually put it onto your Facebook page, which I'm asking a lot here. But if you could do that, it would extend our reach out to a, gr- a bigger audience. If you enjoy uh, the content that you're getting here at the Oxford Holy Club, just do us a favor. We're not asking for money unless you want to buy the merch. Um, if you do want to do that, that's cool too. But we're not asking for money. We are asking that you would share it. And, mi- and I see Natalie Shaw has liked the stream. Thank you, Natalie. Here's, here's what I'm afraid of, though, is that people might share this, and all of a sudden some of their friends will click on it just as Lucas unsheaths it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they're going to be like, what in the world is going on here? So... Yeah, if you're gonna share, share quick before yeah, he comes back with his knife. Or you make a really good point, Matt. I'm yes, so thank excited. you. Everyone's I'm starting so to. It's it's now happening. People are like clicking quick. 
Yeah, Mike. Mike wants to know how many people Lucas has killed. That's what he wants to know. That's. The, I'll tell you what, Mike. You share Lucas. the you share the stream, and we'll get you that number. Yeah, we'll get you a number. <laughs> Thank you, Krista. See, Krista has shared our stream. Guys, your name could come up on the screen. Oh yeah, that's showing. Good. You'll practically be famous. All right, this is starting to sound. This is starting to feel cheap. Well, this is starting to feel cheap. All right. It, yeah. Brad, did you tell us? Oh, yeah, you told us about your purchase, eh? I did. You know what? Lucas will come back. Well, I don't want to start the smorp and then, you know, in the middle of some deep convo and then Lucas. Here we go. He's back. Hey, oh, oh, man. Did you put it in your pocket? So uh, Melissa didn't it's, see. It's coming out from here, isn't it? No, Melissa already commented on the chat about it. it's awful. <laughs> Whatever. Can you hold okay. the, Can you hold it right up to the mic so we can hear the shing? Yeah. yeah no, please don't good. listen. Please don't cut yourself on the live <laughs> podcast. Man, All right, everybody quiet. I'm going to hover over the end this. stream. Anybody play okay. the final countdown for me? Uh, all right, so. Oh, 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 wow. Ready? Oh, boy. Okay. Ready? Oh, check that out. That's terrifying. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, you can see it. Very sharp. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Get away from it's me. It's cooler I than I actually it. imagined it. That thing probably took out some krauts. I mean, well, it was made in 1959, <laughs> so probably not. Unless you really... can't say that. What? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, have, we have a big sauerkraut. He was talking about yeah, sauerkraut. To, uh... We're gonna one more time. Yeah, that distracted. That sounded plastic. Actually, is that? Yeah, no, I think you got ripped not. off. <laughs> you got ripped off. There's not a single. How much is it stain. worth now? Oh, uh, it's unfathomable. Sixty-one dollars. Andrew. Although Andrew. So yeah. nice. Can you fix this? Fix what? Just also, the uh, episode. Before, Melissa, in case you missed it, Lucas, Melissa's requested. Please do don't mean? leave that on the kitchen table. <laughs> Can you? You're up next, my man. <laughs> All right, Smorp, let's go. Oh, I'm leading the Smorp, guys. All right. Killing it. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I've never done this before. No, I'm just joking. Uh, so we're going to do our smorp. So basically, if you've never seen us do this, we are going to read a passage of scripture, and then we're going to discuss it. So smorp stands for scripture, message, obedience, repentance, and prayer. And so essentially, we're going to talk about scripture, you know, what words and phrases and observations we have about it, and message. Is there something that you sense the Lord calling or, or telling you? Um, and then obedience. Is there something that you feel the Lord's telling you to do? Uh, repentance. We don't usually share repentance and prayer um, in the stream, but uh, you know, it, there's a good chance there's something that you need to repent about, and definitely something that we need to pray about. So we're gonna read the passage, and then we will discuss it. Oh, thank you. It's a short one. I usually get the big beefy <laughs> ones. Uh, all right. So tonight we are looking at Isaiah 43:19 to 22. And it says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Yet, you do not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been wary of me, O Israel. I'm going to All apologize, right. Andrew. Normally, I would be able to get the scripture into the chat for everybody, but I can't. Um, I just don't have access. <coughs> I could do that. Could you? If someone could, yeah. if someone could do that and also just get the questions in, that'd be great. Maybe while you do that, I'll give it a read again. Uh, Isaiah 43, sure. verses 19 to 22 it says, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The, be the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Yet you did not call upon me, O Jacob, but you have been weary of me, O Israel. All right, so scripture, what words, phrases, or observations in this passage stand out to you? What does the scripture tell me about the nature and work of God? Go. Um, 
this it's actually I feel like there's a theme over the last few weeks uh from what we've been kind of pulling out of the scriptures because again this one here is the same thing of um actually there's two parts to it where if you're to read a couple of verses before here you're gonna see where it's saying a lot of times uh where it's saying like hey don't forget don't forget mm-hmm. this is what god has done and then all of a sudden what you're dealing with here is israel who is out of babylon and now all of a sudden they're in this place of forgetting again you know yeah. and we talk about this like over and over again it feels like but there's this is the theme and this cycle of like saved uh praise god uh screw it up uh be brought back to god and this around and around and so this whole thing again this whole piece of scripture is just saying like um look you're i'm the one with you in the wilderness i'm the one that's with you in the trials i'm the one who was with you through babylon i'm the one who has walked with you through the desert um and here i'm in the, in the last part of it it's almost if if you could if you could give the prophet a little bit of a frustrated tone where it's just like i've done all of this yet you do not call upon me but you have been weary of me you mm-hmm. know and the word weary i'm going to talk about that in the next section for what that means to me but um it's this whole idea of like once again god is saying don't forget everything I've done, but don't get caught up in all the mistakes and all the all the the places where we maybe have fallen short because that can stifle us moving forward. I'm here. Do not forget that. Yeah. And that's kind of the biggest part for me. <laughs> I think for me the part that jumped out was and it's at, at the very beginning, and I'll share what it means in the message portion was um, behold, I'm doing a new thing and now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Uh and and I've really and then the next part, I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That portion of scripture has come up in my ministry and, and life over the years, especially over the last 10 years, and um, has meant a lot to me. But but that is, you know, I, I look at that and what does it say about the nature of God to me is that he is active. He's he's always doing. He's always working. Mm. And it, we need to we need to be sensitive and understand what he's doing. I'm not going to get in the message part for me personally, but. Um, he's, he's always at work. And when we think maybe he's asleep, he's not anyway. Mm. Um, it's funny. Cause, uh, Mike McPhail in chat said, I was, when he said, you know, new thing in the land, he was talking about like, he remembered the, the new thing, you know, that, uh, DC talked did way back in the day, but it's funny because I also kind of thought of that, but also in like one of the newer Toby Mac songs, he basically reads out that verse. And, and the idea of, I like the idea that Brad, you said about something new is going on, but we don't even realize it. You know, we don't even see it going around around us. And it's easy to get distracted right now with, you know, everything, everybody being stuck inside. And it's, it's like a kind of a, a big moment for the world right now. And there could be some really cool stuff happening that we might not even see because we're so distracted by our life getting turned upside down and our you know, working out of our garages or whatever, right? Like there's, it's just our, our routines are being changed, but that's when mm-hmm. there's a lot of opportunity for good things to happen too. Cool. That's good. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't really have anything to add. You guys said some good stuff. Sure. So we're going to move on to a message. What do you sense the Lord saying to you in this reading? Uh, I'll, I'll me, jump. That... Oh, you, Matt, you... Sorry, go, Brad. you go. Sure. Uh, for me specifically right now, because of, uh, like my whole world of ministry and what I, what I used to doing for ministry is turned upside down and it's, and, you know, it's the same story for a lot of people. So I know I'm not alone in that. I'm not going to harp on this, but, um, but I read this scripture and I thought, okay, Lord, you're, you're not, you're not done just because we're all in our homes. You're not done working. The Holy Spirit's still out calling people. So what does it look like for us now? What, what is the new thing that you're calling us to, to, to be a part of? And, and for me, then that's, that's me. I have to take that personally. That's not, what are you doing in the large scale? Okay, Lord, what are you doing in me? What, what do you want to do in me? What's this new thing? What does it look like for my family? What does it look like for me, for my ministry? And, and I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss what the Lord wants to do in these moments. Um, Life will, you know, we might have some semblance of what it used to be like, but life will not be the same after what we're in right now. So what is the new thing that's happening? And, and right now, just because of conversations I'm having with pastors and leaders uh, across the country and, and a lot here, people feel like 
a lot of people feel like they're in the wilderness and they're just really trying to figure out what is what does life look like what does ministry look like what does staffing look like you know all this different stuff and and the reality is he said that he will make a way in the wilderness now does that mean that it looks the same on the other end of the wilderness no not necessarily but i'll tell you what i would much rather walk in the path that he's put forward for me um, even if it doesn't look the same coming out the other end than I did going in. In fact, I hope I don't look the same coming out the other end than I do going in. So that's what he's been speaking to me. Matt, I, I cut you off right off the bat, so please. No, that's good. I, for me, too, it's coming back. Everything you said was right on, but the idea of weary, mm. this idea of weary. And I think that there's, spirit, there's certain spiritual obediences, there's st- certain spiritual practices, and, I mean, the list is long and as far as, reading your scripture, uh, praying, fellowship, worship, you know, all of these things is, and when I look at this, I just think of where did the slippery slope for Israel begin? What Hmm. was it that after this great time of being saved and there's praise and worship, what were the things that started to slide? You know what I mean? Like, where did they become weary? Where did they start to say, oh yeah, I got to go and I got to do this at temple or, oh no, I got to go and I got to (laughs) pray or, oh, I have to go. And I think of my own life in that cycle, because we're all in that cycle um, of times where it's just like, okay, uh, yeah, uh, oh, I, you know what? This is the first time I've cracked my Bible in two days. You know what I mean? Or, or you know, and, and that's actually being quite generous, uh, <laughs> you know, but oh, like that's, you know, but this is the idea of like, when's the last time I've actually set out and taken some time to pray to God, like to really focus in and really pray. And, and I think that this idea of growing weary we can do and we mm-hmm. and, and because it's it's much easier to be easier than it is to actually do the things that are going to be uh, good for us and so even we talked down at the center uh down with the guys at teen challenge that after they leave you talk to any of the guys who have fallen back and relapsed mm-hmm. um a lot of times they will tell you that the first thing that they stopped doing as a part of their routine and where the disconnect started was when they stopped doing their devotions in the morning and when that started to slide, it just made everything else begin. And it's because we grow weary. Yeah. But again, we'll circle back that if we, if we remember, um, yet if we, how can we say this? If we remember, but we don't dwell um, in a way that hmm. remember what God has done for us, right? But don't dwell on the reason why he had to come save us. Because if we dwell on the reason of why he had to come and save us on the sin, the mistakes, the fallenness, all that stuff. It, it can almost hamper this forward motion. If I can, Matt, it's a, you're hundred percent right. And I'm not going to speak long on it. It's, it's an identity crisis. It's, sure. it's, it's always staying in. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. After Christ has saved you, do you have the ability to sin hundred percent, but your identity yeah. is different now. And so, yes, that was a reality. Those things happen, but you've now been adopted, cleansed, renewed, refreshed, regenerate, you know, you're so, now his child. So live like it don't yeah. don't stay back in don't stay back in egypt yeah right, Conti- right. anyway yeah and, that, and that's that's exactly it is that yet we get and you can compl- you can use whatever word you want complacent lazy you know and again i'm going to say exactly how brad said it. that's i'm talking about this is my pattern you know what i mean i get complacent i get lazy i have different priorities and all of that is this idea of weariness i i'm not doing the things i'm supposed to be doing and therefore how should i expect to stay in that place mm-hmm. where God has brought me to, you know, cause I'm the one that's distancing myself. So for me, that's the message and I'm going to move right into what do I got to do? Um, is we got to, I, I, what do I have to do? I've got to make sure that I, even though I know I'm going to grow weary in things that I make it a spiritual practice that, that I make oh. it a part of, and, and not just like, Oh, I got to do this, you know, like this way we say grace before we eat food. But the idea of, yeah. oh, no, I need to purposely set aside some time in this. Hmm. It's funny, like in the Bible, God often uses the desert as a time to like teach people lessons, whether it's, you know, Abraham, Moses, like all kinds of like examples of taking people out to the desert where they can kind of focus and where they can kind of get their head on straight. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. Like, you know, being stuck at home, being quarantined, that's we're being pulled out of like the daily distractions and all the stuff that we always say, Oh, if, you know, I'll, you know, I'll read my Bible more if I had more time or, you know, I'll eat a little <laughs> better or I'll be able to do a little exercise. Like you have nothing but time now, like to, to work on those things that you need to work on. Um, and the 
Jim Collins said, you know, the, the biggest enemy of being great is when you're good. Cause when you're good, you're like, ah, I don't want to risk it. Like I don't want to throw off my whole balance and then shoot for great. It might, I could get worse, but well, you need to break out of those ruts. And this is, this is the kind of thing that'll let you do that, whether it mm. is, you know, a faith thing or whether it is physical or whatever, you know? So this is a gift. It's hard to think of it that way sometimes, but try, I don't know. Some people have a um, harder situations than others, but try to, you're stuck with it anyway. So try to find the silver lining in it and try to find the, how can you make yourself better in the situation? Hmm. That's good. Um, for me, <clears throat> I just really want, what you said, Brad, at the beginning there, I just really loved about going through the wilderness and it's going to take you through, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be the same when you get to the other side. Mm -hmm. I just really wanted to reiterate that again, because I love that. Uh, but uh, what stuck out for, for me is the following verse in 20, <coughs> where he basically says, the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people just the idea of provision and especially mm -hmm. right where we are right now, yeah. there's so many unknowns for mm -hmm. a lot of people. And, um, just, you know, God is saying like, God, I will provide in the desert yeah. for you guys yeah. and, and Praise just trusting that that's truth mm -hmm. and having faith that God's going to get you through whatever situation you're in. We're all in one big, overarching situation but we all have our in all own individual struggles right now um and so just trust god um, and to add one more thing to what you're saying andrew is that the idea of how many streams will you cross in a desert well none it's a desert right that's the idea of it and so don't expect god to move in ways that you expect him to but right. instead hmm. look look for the ways that only god can move and god can change and god can work uh, and don't discount what you and, and miss potentially a, a way that God could be moving in your life. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Good. Um, so then obedience, write down one step of obedience you need to take today or this week. Does anybody have something well, in there? Matt really, you know, Matt talked well about us keeping our, you know, being disciplined and being, and, and not out of a sense of, a checklist, but out of a sense of relationship with God, of growing and, and knowing him. Um, because for me, if I'm going to be, if, you know, do you not, the, I, God can be doing a brand new thing right now and I can totally miss it. It is well within my capability to miss what God wants to do in this season, in this time. Uh, and, and I would not perceive it. So for me, my act of obedience is to spend the time with him, listening to him, so that I can hear what he tells me to do. And, and mm. you know, as he, and, and as he grows me and, mm. and, and works in me so that I can be the person he wants me to be in the other end. So I want to listen, um, is, and, and spend the time to do that. You know, yes, we have the time at home, but Lucas, you've got three kids and a wife and three, four, three. And I've, I've got two, like we've all got kids right now. So you say, you know, we, yes, we're home and yes, there's time, but there's also like six 30, my kids are up screaming. And the first place I don't, the first place I should Every day, go, I don't think that's normal. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me rephrase. That. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. No point. It taken. all sounds like screaming point taken at six 30 <laughs> in the morning. It all sounds like screaming, but they're up. <laughs> and, and the last thing I want to do at that particular moment is like, okay, I have this great devotional time. But I need to, I, I, you know, like, and it doesn't have to be right that moment. My point is I need to take the time to listen and to, to do what he says and um, to not be complacent with doing things that are good when there is something greater that he has for me to do. Not for my glory. I don't pretend like it's for that. But anyway, that's my, that's my two cents. No, I like that, Brad, because I mean, I would say now the last two weeks for me have just been in nuts like yep. i've yeah. got so much more on my plate and that's and that's not like me complaining or anything but just it's, it's a brand new place this, this isn't a quieter time really when it comes down to it and it's almost taking up more time take you know i'm thrown out of my routine which would normally include that quiet time and things like that so just r recognizing that and, and making sure i continue to have that time maybe out here in the old garage 
Your fortress of solitude. Mm. <laughs> the sauna of solitude. Sauna nice. of solitude. I love that. My, Matt. Mine would kind of jump right on with your guys because like uh, I have more like free time throughout the day and stuff, but because my day kind of gets off to a kind of a wild start or whatever, I, I haven't done my, I haven't read my Bible like this, this last week. And that's normally, it's funny because the tighter my schedule normally, the better I do my devotions because I know that if I don't block out time to do it, I will. It's my Saturdays. It's my summers. It's time when I have like, I could do whatever I want. I got all day and I just don't do it. So I need to like lock that in because I have a little more free form in my time to make sure I'm doing that this week. So next week you can check in and see if I did it and that'll hold me accountable. Pounds or peppers? We'll, that will do some kind of variation for you. <laughs> Scripture <laughs> or something. Yeah. Scripture. Right. Uh, Serrano peppers. Proverbs or peppers. <laughs> Proverbs <laughs> or peppers. There. Nice, Matt. All right. Um, yeah, because you already did yours, Matt. So unless anybody has any repentance or prayer they want to share. Um, it, I think Lucas already did it. We're, we're yeah. good. Lucas covered us. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yep. Excellent. That was some great conversation. I haven't seen so, anything that's come in through chat. Um, okay, so I want to bring up one thing in chat that I think is a good question. Isn't necessarily fitting to that, but uh, and we can keep it short. Uh, Michael asked, because we were talking about how everything is new. Everything is being done differently. Sure. Um, he said, what do you think the impact is going to be uh, once all of this is over, the COVID piece Ooh. is over, and people can, can go back to church? You're going to see churches who have advanced in their online presence. Are mm. people going to stay in bed and watch church, or are you going to see them flock back to church? Uh, and then he hashtagged it uh, sleep country. So, uh, so uh, was... you, you got to hand it to Mike. The, 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 the man knows, oh, yeah. the man knows his hashtags. <laughs> I was, I was having a conversation with someone today and just to kind of, Mike, you make an excellent point. And the thought that crossed my mind and you guys can tell me what you think about this. Uh, we already know that right now are in our, within our culture, we are losing the sense of what it means to have delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. everything is now it's immediate it's when i want it and and everything that we're creating technologically is geared towards two day that shipping. what's that two day yeah, shipping two day shipping no, not not right now too long. But, but too long who's got the time the problem like i i wonder i i get why we've all gone online because that's how we're doing it that's that's what's being done and and it's working what i'm curious to see is what it's going to look what are we creating in terms of this whole idea of immediate gratification for people that can take in any service anywhere, anytime, which they could before, but now it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. They can give to whatever they want, you know, with their money, um, just like they can before. But again, it's just, it's everywhere now. And, and I wonder what it is going to do to us coming out the other end when it's like, well, and it's like what Mike said, I have to get up and go to church. Well, why would I do that? Or, you know, like you can fill in the blank. Like people are doing their music online. They're performing online. Like everything is happening online now out of necessity. And what is that creating in us for good and bad? And, and I'm, I'm really interested to see how, how we, how we navigate. And I, I, I don't have an answer by the way, but yeah. how we navigate. And I don't this whole think thing there with... is one. Right. Right. But I, so I think it's interesting that we're, I think the church has responded very well. Even some of the smallest yep. churches. Yep. When it comes to the technology side and being connected, I've been absolutely blown away by it. Agreed. Um, we did, so a Teen Challenge, I mean, we're in a spot right now where our outreaches are being canceled because people aren't meeting in their church. Um, and so that's a huge hit for us financially. Um, but we, this past Sunday, did a virtual outreach uh, with a church in, uh, in Nova Scotia. And we didn't leave the center. Mm -hmm. It was the most cost-effective outreach we've mm -hmm. ever run. A hundred percent. But, and this is, I think, what's going to make the difference when this is all over, um, is that our guys said, yeah, that was really cool. That was fun. But it's always better to be able to just meet and shake hands and talk to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, yes. I think that's what the draw is going to be. It's it's a community piece um, that, that people are going to be really lacking. Like, they're going to want to be with people you know what i mean because there's yes. so much to that to be said even people that say they don't like around to be around people yeah you, you still it. you still like, need it like <clears throat> physiologically you need it and so mm -hmm. i think that i think that this it, this is my hope okay is that all this online presence is going to entice a larger 
number of people mm-hmm. um, who, when the time comes, may be interested enough to step foot in the building to say, okay, that wasn't as scary as I yes. thought it as long as, mm, as it could yeah. have been. Maybe I will show up for a, you know, yeah. a Sunday service or that's my hope that about this. I think anything. Uh, on the other side of things too, a lot of churches that aren't online are finally recognizing that there's value in it. Um, because I can say personally that our church, we've gotten numerous people that have reached out to us and have said, Hey, like I saw, I watched your video. I watched your service. Mm -hmm. It was great. Thank you so much. People that just have like a friend's fringe connection or just no connection. Mm. And so we've actually, you know, it's, it's been clear that, you know, maybe moving forward, we have to continue this in some capacity, probably not the same capacity, but in some capacity. So here's a question uh, to put you on the spot um uh lucas you first just because you already admitted you don't read your bible um <laughs> the uh how many people have you invited to church in the last uh two months three months oh not between right? zero and one somewhere there <laughs> right which is common that would be all of us for the most part yeah um, hey. other than maybe you know you, the number's low am i safe to say yeah. that oh yeah it's, it's very safe <laughs> yeah okay and so but how much how much for us has it been? And I don't think this needs this can't be the replacement. But even for us in taking a step, I've shared our <coughs> church's um, Sunday morning services mm-hmm. to my Facebook. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying this can replace anything nope. that the church right. does, but I'm saying no. it, it's an outreach for the time. Absolutely. Because it's, mm-hmm. it's all that we can do in this time. And I yeah. agree with what you're saying, Andrew. I think something needs to continue with these churches in their presence but not at the capacity because you don't want people to feel like this is the church um i don't know uh i'm even skeptical of saying that no yeah it's it's funny too because you know like i we we were there we did we did the you know coffee on the couch church thing and it was great you know our you know our pastor brought an awesome word the worship went phenomenal like way better than i thought it would not because i thought they couldn't pull it off but i thought am i going to be able to like worship sitting on my couch with like a computer speaker like am i really going to be able to get into it when i'm not into a big, big group of people um and it, they, they did an excellent job like and it was really good and, and it went way better than i thought it would just for my own kind of like interaction with it um but yeah i'm definitely missing the like person to person i am excited about the idea they might phase out handshakes for a while like the greet the meet and greet time i could do without that in a heartbeat yeah. let me do- um but <laughs> l- 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 but i do i did miss the the only thing that was missing was that like corporate face-to-face being with people thing oh yeah. uh, mike also says you. uh mike also <laughs> says man it's a great time to be a pastor of media <laughs> no <laughs> not for them right no, now no, not for them i doubt these it guys, yeah these guys right now are thinking oh what has happened this is exactly but this is what, exactly what my world right now to do is what it's forcing schools to do or some schools anyway it's basically saying all right well you might not have wanted to do online stuff now you kind of have to yeah, and what's you your won't always have to. You won't always have to, but now you know what you can do. And yeah. now mm. you can't say, I can't do it. And now it'll give you new ideas, even though the original way, like school in person and church in person is the, the better way to do it. At least you know you have these other options. And, and like, how is it going to change that way? Mm-hmm. And the most it's time- amazing how fast everybody figured it out. Oh, Just amazing. Like- that was the <laughs> thing I couldn't get over. Everybody had something going, even if it yeah. was something like a, like mm-hmm. what we're doing right now. If it was just a Facebook live, is yeah. even if it was that, there was some church I was like, "Good heavens, I can't believe you pulled that off." You right. know what I mean? Yeah. But, mm-hmm. And so here's here's another question. Uh, th- th- this is for me. So we've seen the church have to respond, okay? Yeah. In in something like this, and I and it's also I think true to say that a lot of times churches can be almost scared of taking certain steps because of whether it's unknown, like technology being one for Big a time. lot of churches. You know what I mean? Yep. Now that they've had to take this step, um, now that they've had to take this step and be like, ready or not, we got to figure this thing out. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that may remove some of the trepidation or some of the fears of having to take steps into more relevance within culture, within technology, within, mm-hmm. and what could that look like for them moving <laughs> forward? COVID's over. Technology, we're not worried about that because they seem to have all figured out. Like yeah. that's Holy Spirit work, no doubt. But this <laughs> idea that, like, what else to now? Will they maybe not be afraid to try? Yeah, Does that make sense. Think, yes, and that'll be. You know, this is a pad answer. It's definitely going to be contextual to the person. But there's an there's an opportunity for everyone that was comfortable and didn't want to give. 
they had to. And, and there's an opportunity for growth for all of us. So that if I understand what you're saying, Matt, when the next thing comes, we won't be so scared because we'll be like, hey, we, we were able to handle it back. We were afraid of jumping into tech and, and all that and video, but we, we did it. And now this next thing's coming. We're not going to be so afraid. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe not even maybe not even <clears throat> waiting for the next thing. But there's going to be people in your churches who are going to say, hey, we pulled that off. Why are we dragging our feet on this? Why Ooh. are we dragging our feet on this? Like what? And I mean, you're always going to have the opposition in the church. It's like trying to put drums at the front of the church. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's people that are going to be upset by it, but is it something that's going to move things forward? Hmm. And, and so I, I don't know if relevance is the word or. Um, no, but I, I get the impulse. But, yeah. Like the, or, you know, and it's not all going to be right, but I wonder if there's going to be almost this little bit of a guard dropped to say, Hey, Look what look what happened with the online presence. What can we do next? It's funny mm. because there's so many like like you said like we were all we've all been saying it like all of a sudden all the excuses that people have for not going online they found a way around it pretty quick when they thought like oh we might not get a church service happening right um, and I remember I listened to a Craig Groeschel podcast one time it was like two years ago and I still remember it he goes you have what you need to succeed like you, people always say we need more resources he goes resources are never your biggest problem. You always think it is it's like, oh, we need more money. We need a better camera. We need this. And people aren't ready and blah, 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 blah. It's never your biggest problem. Like just, if you go out and try, yeah, you'll probably need to do some upgrades or whatever, but you just try it. Like, and, and most of these churches from the mega churches to a little like, you know, corner church with 15 people, like they're figuring it out. And, and, and I hope we keep some of that stuff going forward. And as excited as I am to go back, right. I think it's great. Like, Hey, maybe we don't have to go out for, um, a deacon's meeting when there's like ice all over the roads every single time. Like, Hey, we'll just do a Zoom mm. meeting every time. Like, Hey, yeah. Yeah, this most of the time very I'd practical. rather meet in person, but Hey, now that's an option now. We know. I, yeah. my, my last thought on this whole thing is, uh, and I'm not knocking anyone that does it this way. And I'm sure there are great services with great production value and, and all of that, that you could take in. I personally, and this is just me. One of the things that I like about the way that we're doing this with uh, the Asher Holy club is that we're having conversation. Um, if it was just me sitting in my living room, watching my church service, um, the worship music and all that, that'd be great. And the message I'm sure would be great. What I would be missing would be the conversation, the working out the salvation type stuff. And, and, and I'm sure that they create that space for that as well. So, uh, I'm not complaining. I'm, what I'm saying is how much I really appreciate what we do and how we can have conversation. Unfortunately, I, technology really screwed me over at the beginning of the episode and I couldn't see any <laughs> chat or interact with anybody except you three, which is also fine. But, mm -hmm. um, like I, I honestly missed being able to be in chat and see who's there and talk to people because mm -hmm. to me, we have a community of people and, and I'm encouraged by that. Um, guys, I think based on the time we will, uh, not do the next couple of things and we should make our, make our leave, take our leave. Can we please just for the fun of it? Yes. Uh, we'll 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 call it a show right now, but can we please do an after show of Pictionary? I was looking forward to this the whole time. Okay. All right. Okay. And so here's what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna do, anybody that's watching us online, don't go anywhere. You're gonna hear us sign off right now, <laughs> but don't go anywhere because we're gonna have a game of Pictionary. Uh so this is the after party. We're gonna have to we're gonna come up with a sweet name for it though. Okay. Um Oxford Holy Club after party is just not doing it for me. Oxford so, Holy anyway, after anywhere. Club. We're going to sign out, but don't go anywhere. And then we're going to play Pictionary. All right, Lucas. Lucas, get us out of here. Yes. All right. I got 4% left on my iPad. So let me read these notes. Uh, so you can follow our Facebook. Uh, well, I already screwed it up. Uh, you can follow our podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, the wonderful YouTube at Oxford Holy Club. Uh, if you're using social media, throw up the hashtag OH Club. Uh, we'd love for you to leave us a five-star ratings on iTunes. And if you do, we'll read it on the air. Not only that, but you can send your questions to us at www.oxfordholyclub.com. You can look at our merch and maybe even buy it. Uh, you can <laughs> no send pressure. us questions for tiebreakers or just maybe you have a question that you want us to answer on air. And we don't pay to advertise. So any growth that we have comes from you. So sharing us with others really helps a lot. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you stick around. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, keep spiritually fit and have stay fun. inside. And stay oh, home. Lucas, you, can you, Lucas, can you not read? 
What? Did you change it? All right. Nobody go anywhere. Don't leave. Are we signed out, Brad? <laughs> uh, or like, are we? Okay, that's the end of the audio. Okay, Pictionary. Let's go. Brad, I've... you're going to have to explain this. All right. So what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to play Pictionary. Um, and what's going to happen is Andrew is going to bring up a whiteboard. on. So, Andrew, why don't you go and do that right now? Bring up a whiteboard. Okay. I can't tell. Do we still have viewers? Oh, uh, yes, yep. we do. Yep. We two got, dozen. We got two dozen, bud. Oh, wow. That's the lowest we've been all along. This is great. Great. Thanks, everybody, for sticking yeah. out with us. And, and I, I will. Nothing to do that everybody's stuck at home. I want to say <laughs> yeah. thank you to those that were able to share the podcast. Um, just quickly, like for our church, the first time we did a video two weeks ago, I, only a couple people shared it. And, you know, we had pretty good numbers, like 900 views on that video. The last time we asked people to share and it were around 3,000 right now views from our okay. that's why you were so repetitive about the sharing thing tonight yes because i want to get, <laughs> I, get I, it. I, I want to get this podcast out to people it, it sharing really will make a difference for us sharing is caring sharing it, is it, caring. it is so all right so uh we're gonna why don't one of us give andrew no no no. he just comes up with his own so we're oh, all guessing we're just we're just guessing okay we're gonna guess i think yeah that's how you do it right and, and andrew so, are, are you gonna describe yeah but aren't they gonna give me topic uh no no topic ideas oh okay no, oh, it's awkward now, isn't it? All right, I somebody. What do you want to do? So no, no, you can't just give a category. Andrew, just pick something. And people you at one. home, you can guess along too. There you go. Okay, right. Andrew, so you got to. And does Andrew tell us the category? Yeah, that would make sense, Andrew. So now you got to figure out what you're drawing and then categorize it. <laughs> Nick Sardi <laughs> says uh, it's all about the algorithm. It is Nick. Although I'm, you, although I'm reading that in a very like conspiracy type tone from Nick. You really gotta, you really gotta. It's Facebook's it's tough. About, well, they're all tough. Nick's saying it like this: "It's all about the algorithm." And he's sitting in a dark corner, like smoking. Yeah. Hey, who's drawing on my whiteboard? Nick's, Nick's a good dude. Who's drawing? Oh, have we been hijacked? Okay. No. You, so we can hijack his screen and start yeah, drawing. <laughs> You can lock it down. I've had to talk. We had some teachers who got hijacked a couple of times on their whiteboard. We had to okay, teach here to we go. So down. don't don't hijack them. All right. Uh, so Andrew, you okay. give us the category and then you start drawing. Okay, the category is movie. Oh, yes. Movie. Oh, yes. Okay. Clockwork Orange. So okay. Everybody at home, you can play along. Okay. Lord of the Rings. Oh, it's a wow. Bird bo Bird Box. <laughs> We should make him write it down so he doesn't change it halfway through. Yeah. I'm not going to change it. Uh, uh, Black Mirror. Cube. Oh, yeah. Good guess, Brad. Thank you. Oh, uh, The Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe. Uh, Midway. Stargate. Um, no, no. Uh, Land of the Rising Sun. Uh, Why are you doing shapes? Why aren't you freehand yeah. drawing? The Pacific. <laughs> because it's hard. Oh, no. How do I get back to the cat? There it is. is that a cat? Okay. Uh, oh, no. This is a, it's a The Republic of... I feel like it's a person in a picture. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. They have hair. It's, a show, it's the Oxford Holy Club. The Simpsons. <laughs> what? No, the Simpsons. Uh, anger management. Uh, Grumpy or old men. A Anchorman. Same you said here. movie or show? Oh, man. People uh, are guessing. Scott said here. money pit. Money, Nick money pit. said Pearl Harbor. Or Wally. No. Uh, no. Oh, oh, uh, Passion of the Christ, Passion of the Christ, Passion of the Christ. No. Uh, oh, that's a good guess. That is a good guess. I thought you that's, had us. Yeah. Okay. And now it's not a picture. It's like a box. What's going yeah. on here? Okay. So it's not a picture frame. Planes, trains, automobiles. Speed. Speed. Oh, speed. That's a good guess. It's speed. I'm a good He's no, still drawing. I think speed. it's not speed. Oh, that's not a bus then. Okay. Home Alone. We've got Home Alone. We've got Home Alone. We've got Seven. Uh, seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> That'd be dark. Mike. That's a dark turn, Mike. Oh boy, Mike. Come on. <laughs> um, hmm. What's the deal with? It's a Seinfeld documentary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what am I looking at here? Are sleeves really important? Is, there a time... Is that a gun? Are you drawing a gun? He <laughs> drew a gun. That's a banana. A That's a banana. It's Lucas. <laughs> hey, I got a one of these um... bad boys. So just to clarify, is that draw. hair, Andrew? Is that hair? Yeah, that's hair. Okay. Uh, I don't think you're allowed to ask questions. Is this Die Hard? Yes. What? Oh, oh my goodness! It's the Christmas thing with him in the with him in the 
Matt, that's a wait. Who said it in chat? Um, and Tiffany, Spider Man doesn't oh, have a gun. That uh, is odd. Yeah, Spider Man doesn't kill people. <laughs> and he's in the he's in the duct. All right. Oh yeah, good, good, good. Should, oh, I like that. Okay. Should we play I another I was one in the front and... of seat of a car? Sorry. Oh, we... God. No. That's okay. Me. So does that mean I? It's my turn. Does that mean I get to go? Oh, I guess so. Fair. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just a second here. All right. So how do I do this? You now? click the share button. Share screen. Oh, I cannot because board. Andrew's still sharing. Andrew's gonna okay. unshare. Got to relinquish right. command. What's in the box? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. Whiteboard. Okay. That must have been Mike McPhail, was it? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know it. Okay. So just. Okay. Get the bad boy in the comment section. So can you see what's going on there? We can. I see a whiteboard. Is it but... taking the full screen for you guys? Yep. Yep. Okay. I didn't embarrass you. <laughs> no, you I didn't embarrass you. <laughs> Tiffany, I guessed that. That, dude, that was fantastic. All right. So um, my turn. Um, okay. All right. Uh, it's a movie. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna freehand it. I'm gonna try to think of all your favorite movies. The okay. Matrix. Basic. Oh, okay. I honestly was gonna draw Neil. <laughs> I was gonna draw for the Matrix. I kid you not. <laughs> Lucas, you know me so well. Wow, Lucas, you're good at this. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna do a new movie. You can do another one. Yeah. You're gonna yeah, do yeah. another one because that's unbelievable, Lucas. And I'll 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 shut my gob till you. You're a uh... mind reader. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm glad your uh, movies. You haven't seen any good movies since <laughs> university. <laughs> I don't know if right. I said really being a pickle. His go to is his go to is the Matrix. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, I don't think you're set right, to draw it, though. Are you? Do you have the drawing the, yeah, tool? I can see it. <clears throat> okay, this is a movie. All right, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, and it's all freehand. Matrix. Oh, it is janky, but oh yeah, you could tell. It's really good. <laughs> All right. Peanuts. A Bug's Life. Frozen. Charlie Brown. Lucas again. Frozen. You Holy smokes! It, wow. Matt's two movies: Matrix and Frozen. <laughs> you have you do have a range. <laughs> you do have a range. That's right. All right, Lucas, you have a turn. Oh no! Oh, Doctor. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm done. Whose turn? How do I not? Uh, how do I? Oh, stop share. Stop okay. sharing. Yeah. Oh, I'm really doctor. enjoying this. I oh, feel like oh, I know. I, I feel like there's a certain freedom in this that we don't have in the first hour. We're we're quickly losing viewers. <laughs> yeah, we're bleeding them off. It's bedtime. It's bed it's okay, bedtime. so Lucas, your turn. All right. Yeah, I'm on it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Where do you get to shapes? You know what? No, that was oh, yeah. Just, uh, oh, Monica that wasn't Rose. cheating. Monica this is going to be an easy one, correct. so you're going to have to guess quick. And bayonet what's the, knife. What's the category? Your bayonet, your knife. TV. <laughs> Frying pan. I was Star Trek. Star Trek. Star Trek. St Enterprise. Uh, Starship Enterprise. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great drawing. I didn't, I didn't even get a chance to draw like a Roman <laughs> Warbird. It, or is a little bit, it is a little disappointing whenever they guess early, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. Like, like <laughs> really. That's a bad Warbird right there. Wow. All right, <laughs> Brad, have a turn. All right, Brad's All right. turn. Brad, choose not a movie or show. I'm not. I'm choosing an animal. Okay. I feel like that is going to be easy. I guess it depends on your drawing. I saw a hawk at drawing. Freehand only. No no cheating like Beckwith. Okay. <laughs> no geometric shapes. Listen, there was no rules when I... You can't say <laughs> yeah. I was cheating. That's, no, that's fair. Sure. All right, here we go. Oh, now the shot. <laughs> yeah. That's a duck. Dog. Dog. Duck. No, it's a duck. duck. It's a duck. Uh, Whoa, oh, it's a T-Rex. Oh, who, who, who said T-Rex? Who said T-Rex? It's a T-Rex. Yeah. A dog with an overbite. Oh, so good. Okay, this has got to be our... This is also where we can test out part... Nick's already guesses Penguin. Um, This is also a part where we can test out bits for the show. And Scott says some... Liger. And get some Liger. Oh, I know what Scott's been watching. If he's saying Liger, <laughs> we're not going to get into that. So we can. Uh, it'll be part of the uh, Oxford Holy Club Club. Club Club. Yeah. That's a club. that's a nasty right. T Rex. So, so let us know. Let us know. Do you think is this was this funny? Is this fun? <laughs> no. Is, <laughs> could this be worked into the regular? It's fun for show? us. Yeah. Fun I think that's good. Yeah. People are guessing. Uh, I think it's good. Do we like it? Get rid of it. I like it. I'm into it. That was fun. All Dictionary right. Dictionary takes the cake, except for those poor podcast listeners. Well, gentlemen, shall that's we it. get out of here yet again? Yeah, that was fun.
Do you want to? Are we all you cool cats and kittens? You want, yeah. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to try our our patented catchphrase again? Yeah. So Lucas, it's uh, okay, all right, everybody. Keep uh, keep spiritually fit. Have fun and, and stay, stay home. home. Okay. That's what stay home. Is, okay. Which here, is what I did, wasn't it? Here comes no. the music. You were like, like, stay in your house, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll come get you. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, keep spiritually fit. And have and fun. Stay home. And stay home. <laughs> and go. Oh, no. I did it and right. Stay home. If you have to be told to go home. <laughs> I said go home. <laughs>